right, let's talk about money for a moment. You know, I'll be honest. The first night when they declared the quarantine and they began to kind of predict just what was going to happen as America shut down, I had a sleepless night. It was one of the worst nights of my life. I wasn't just thinking about my own finances, but also my clients, friends and family, obviously in the state of the world. The next day, I immediately got on the phone with my financial person who manages all of our money. And she said, well, for you, you're set for life. But as I began, in fact, I was on vacation with some people. As I began to talk to them, many of them, this was devastating. Their businesses now were shut down. They're going to have to give money back uh, to a lot of their customers. And there was no hope in sight. And this has continued to be a problem for many of them. Uh, there's a couple that it's looking like divorce is imminent. It's gotten so bad. And for others, uh, you know, they're just, they just don't know what's going to happen. They're just sort of riding this wave and just hoping a miracle ensues. So for chiropractors and many of the doctors that I work with, they had a couple of months, PPP helped, maybe they have a few years of money, but certainly they're in trouble. And this is because not that they haven't made enough or that they haven't been a chiropractor long enough or that we're in some sort of profession or some sort of world that makes being wealthy just too darn difficult. It's really just needing to understand the principles of money. So we're going to be doing here in the future uh, shortly something called Escaping the Money Pit, uh, that Money Pit movie. Um, I'm probably dating myself, but it's an old movie. Uh, that talked about a house that just sucked all their money away and made them broke and caused this marriage to uh, end almost in a divorce. And it reminded me a lot of what people face today. So that's what we're calling it, Escaping the Money Pit. We're going to go over a few things there that you know would be valuable just to listen to now. One is setting up your spending buckets. Financial leaders will tell you it's not that people don't make enough money, it's consumption. So we're going to show you how to consume successfully. Uh, optimizing investable cash, and I call it setting up your financial machine. Determining allocations. This is kind of something that obviously most people don't fully understand. Uh, it's real estate, equities, bonds, heavy metals, life insurance, cash allocations. You know, How do you know how much to put in any one area with your money and, and making sure you have covered um, all these different spaces for investment, you know, we're going to make sure you understand that. Creating multiple streams of income. You know, that isn't necessarily um, as exciting as it sounds sometimes. If you don't know what you're doing, you could just keep creating new things that are just new ways to lose money. Or you can learn the best ways to invest in what we call, for example, uh, businesses within a business. That That's the best way uh, to invest in a additional stream of income. Um, we call it a BWB, a business within a business. It's called convergent or, or a core business strategy or core growth strategy. Uh, again, looking at streams of income from real estate. I don't know if you know this, but there's eight different ways that I've done real estate and I'm going to go over all eight with you. Uh, understanding stocks and bonds. You know, you, you can't just go to any financial planner and just trust your financial future in their hands. There's a lot of philosophies out there, and I, I personally, when I first started using financial planners, they just lost me money. And so there's a lot of ways uh, to have your growth minimized because of the wrong strategy or the wrong planner, and there's a lot of ways to lose money with the wrong strategy and the wrong planner, but there's a best way for safe and effective long-term growth. Um, you know, and then just building assets, something I learned a long time ago, that what you're trying to do is grow asset value. It's not just simply about I can afford a Rolex because I'm, I'm rolling so much in dough, but as, as much as that over time, your net worth grows, you know, so that you get into an eight-figure, uh, for some people, maybe even a nine-figure net worth, because uh, there are chiropractors with nine-figure net worths. Uh, that's what I aspire to. Um, and so, you know, that, that's what we're going to be going over um, in, in these events here that are going to be happening over the next few weeks. Couple last rules just to give you as we wrap up. One is just to start thinking about right now, you know, how do I look at my overhead? Because often we focus on how much we gross. And this, for example, doctors that are adding a lot of 
other services, they're adding to the growth, but not necessarily the net. So, so a rule to walk away from from this video is that I only keep on an average in, in a, the chiropractic community, maybe 50, maybe only 40% of what I make, but I actually keep 100% of what I don't spend. So we have to learn how to manage, again, consumption. Uh, I want to talk about managing the gap. So one of the things that we're going to get into as we move forward here is how do we uh, create free cash? Because free cash, you know, for example, uh, I, I'm looking for opportunities and have found a couple here during the COVID crisis for multifamily homes. But the only reason I could get them is I've created enough free cash to pay cash for them. These are not investments that the opportunity would be there if I had to use a bank. And banks actually, something I've learned in this process, are not giving money like they used to for uh, commercial investments. Uh, you know, how do I focus on what we call Occam's razor, the straightest line to just you making money? You know, we're going to talk a lot about that because my first financial mentor, when we're talking about investments, said, well, how do you quickly make money? What's your most direct path? Because I had a lot of other things going on that weren't making money. He got me focused. Uh, you know, right now, um, you know, how do you set a path towards eliminating debt? And this is the last thing I'll say because getting debt free, which is the very first thing, thankfully, my first financial mentor got me focused on, is something that can often be controversial. People say, well, you know, you could leverage debt, uh, which there are times that you can leverage what we call good debt. But what we have often is bad debt as doctors. And once we're out of bad debt, now we practice, we move forward in our lives because we love to practice, because we love people. Every decision we make is suddenly for the right reasons, to serve God and to save lives. It literally is your debt is gone, it sets you free. And thankfully, somebody showed me how to do that just three months into my practice being open. And I want to make sure I've done the same for you to set you free, get rid of any worry or concern about the future. You know, if they end up shutting us down again at some point, or if we go into a true recession or a true depression, that you're okay. So I uh, look forward to uh, your questions, comments, uh, your commitment to being part of the financial series that's coming up soon, Escaping the Money Pit. Bless you and remember who you are.